Let's get some analysis now. Alessandro Politi is the director of the NATO Defence College Foundation. He joins me live from Rome. Welcome, Alessandro. Now, supplying weapons is one thing. Logistics, that's, that's one thing. I, as I understood, there's a reason why we haven't seen US fighter jets being piloted by US fighter pilots. And that's because if foreign troops get killed by Russian soldiers in this, in this conflict, it draws that country directly into war with Russia. Isn't that the, the major concern? Uh, in reality, you know, our American friends have several concerns. First of all, uh, you know, you can send contractors, but when you send troops, as it was, you know, discussed before, you know, in your uh, TV uh, program, well, it is a different thing. And evidently, since the start of the conflict, Biden made it quite clear that he would assist Ukraine, but not going beyond national interest and in risking a war with Russia. That is the bottom line since the beginning. And also the other European allies who have even less capacities have more or less, you know, followed that lead in more or less explicit ways. As for the million shells, uh, Zelensky knew from the start that it was impossible, you know, uh, European allies are doing the best, but they can't recon uh, reconvert at a snap the defense industry that was geared up, you know, for uh, peacekeeping, peace enforcement missions. This takes years, and it's a fact. And the other thing is, of course, it is very difficult for the Europeans to continue their military assistance, which, by the way, is not NATO, it's just the Rammstein group of contact, uh, which is different, huh? uh, because they can't disarm themselves if they want to keep somehow a credible conventional deterrence. And this must be rebuilt, by the way. So it takes time. And it is a matter of fact. And unfortunately, this is the situation. Sending troops in Ukraine directly is, uh, you know, an interesting discussion. But I suspect uh, there is no consensus because people would ask themselves, where are they deployed? What happens if they are killed by Russians or vice versa, if Russians are killed by these troops? And, uh, you know, it's a matter of deterrence and involvement. So it's, it's the fact that our uh, uh, American and Canadian friends sent, you know, representatives just to observe is a clear political signal. I, I, I wonder, uh, Alessandro, what's your view on in terms of what public sentiment is towards the conflict in Ukraine, talking about the European public? Are they still in favour of sending so much financial support? And, and how would they feel if suddenly one of their own nationals, a soldier, came back in a body bag? I think that for the moment, you know, there is a part of public opinion who would be prepared to do so. Uh, I think the rest of the public opinion, you need to have somehow polls, you know, but it's just, you know, a, uh, so a, a very uh, superficial evaluation. Uh, but, you know, to send assistance, if Europe doesn't produce enough butter, there will be no money, neither for the guns in Europe, nor for the guns in Ukraine, nor for the reconstruction of Ukraine. And this is a problem. Uh, it's not just a matter of taxes or social expenditure, which is true, you know, but it's it's a matter, you know, of uh, possibilities. Uh, unfortunately, the European Union is not a, uh, a an ATM stuffed with cash. Huh? It's uh, it's again a matter of making debt. Which debt? You know. So it's it's very concrete. Everybody understands the importance to stop Russian aggression. But here and now, it's much more difficult. Unfortunately, the Ukrainian counteroffensive failed. And uh, we are in a situation where everybody needs to buy time, including the Russians, who now are more confident, but they know very well what high price they paid for a strategic failure, because Ukraine didn't collapse. So Putin has its own things to tell to his own Siloviki, but he knows very well that dissent in Russia, not just democratic dissent, which is less a problem for him, is strong. 
the Prigozhin episode was very clear, and uh, I suspect that Russians are saying that they are ready somehow to negotiate because they understand they also are under pressure. Alessandro, appreciate your analysis. My guest this hour, Alessandro Politi, who's director Thanks. of the NATO Defence College Foundation.